There are two and soon three FDA approved treatments for symptoms. You know, the motor symptoms, the choreiform movements, um, the involuntary movements. But there are no approved treatments specifically for, you know, the psychiatric issues. You know, we use the, the large number of psychiatric agents that are available. Drug trials, for instance, and other clinical research projects, you know, have been, you know, given special consideration and priority by the FDA and the NIH because of the great unmet need. I think it's just important to be aware that even when we're creating drugs and the drug trials that we're trying to create, that many of our HD patients don't have money. You know, we're talking about patients that get that are affected by a disease in their 40s, you know, which is kind of like peak income potential age, right? Um, and then all of a sudden, not only are they not able to work, but because they're not able to work, they lose the health insurance. And if they lose the health insurance, there may be a gap as to when is the next time that they can be insured. Um, you know, Medicare eligibility, it takes two years of having a disability before you can get Medicare. And unless you're under a certain threshold of income, you also don't apply for Medicaid. So we have patients that are a little bit of this limbo in terms of access to care. Um, and then also the impact that that has on the family. So I think it's just important to acknowledge that, you know, when it comes to like drug development and then how that can even impact minoritized communities even further, which are communities that for multiple structural policies and reasons, they even have um, less access to intergenerational wealth or, you know, more limitations when it comes to um, um, socioeconomic um, kind of like improvement in um, socioeconomic status.